Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. Today we're taking a look at another knife that I got from uh, rakeknives.ca and you can purchase there too. They've got some very good priced knives, especially if you live in Canada. Usually most knives in Canada cost 30-40% more than they cost in the U.S. Uh, their knives cost 15% more than it is in the U.S. without any of the hassle of crossing the border or anything. So tend to be very good deals and they've got very good knives. A lot of them, like this one, have 14C28N by Sandvik, which is a good stainless steel. And this thing's got a low price. This is called the Hussar G10 Handle Scales Liner Lock. They have the Hussar also as a frame lock titanium S35VN, just under 200 Canadian shekels. So uh, if you got that kind of money, I think the design is worth it. I don't know if the titanium one's worth it or not because I don't have one. I've never touched one. But uh, we're going to take a look at this G10 budget version under, I think it's 45. Where's my book? $44.95 Canadian. I've got the American price on the screen. Yes, Americans can purchase these knives from rakeknives.ca, but if you want to buy them domestically, I've got links down below. I think White Mountain Knives might have this knife as well. But, uh, since Rake Knives sent me this knife at a bit of a discount, you probably saw the on the intro it set up in the corner that this is a paid promotion. Uh, I review all my knives exactly the same way, regardless of how I got them. So let's get to the tabletop and take a good close look at this guy. Let's take a quick overall look at this thing. We've got a swedge that starts way back on the handle, on the, by the handle, goes all the way to the tip, a flat grind, a saber grind, because it doesn't come all the way to the spine of the blade, decent sharpness trial, fairly well done. Uh, it's a little thick right behind the tip, <laughs> makes it very strong behind the tip as well. We've got stainless steel liners, a liner lock where the lockup's pretty good. I'll talk in more detail about those things. G10 handle scales. Obviously, there's going to be screws beneath this G10 to put these on because that screw there, it only goes into the liner. It doesn't go all the way through. So we will take this knife apart and take a good close look at it later on. Next, let's do the size comparison. And I'm using this Ganzo G727M. This size is between the Rat 1 and the Rat 2. So that tells you something about the size of this knife. It's bigger. It's close to the size of the, of the Ontario Rat 1. I just don't have my Rat 1 available right now to show you. So yeah, satin finish. We've got the brakes name here on the bevel. I don't really like it there. I wish they would have put it here on this flat section and maybe even a tiny bit smaller. I'm not all for huge badging. Same thing here. I would prefer that to be a little smaller. We've got Rake's logo again, this time their round logo, model number P121-B. It also comes in uh, the date stamp when it was made, and then the serial number for this specific knife. And right there, we've got the steel type listed. So that's all the writing on the knife. Uh, the blade shape, this is a straight back. It looks a bit like an upswept blade, but in reality, all they did was mill away a little bit of the steel here to make it look like it sweeps up. And then, you know, with this line here where the swedge is and, you know, it just comes up with the grind, it's not really upswept. I like that they have the uh, plunge following the shape of the handle, so it comes back, gives you a little bit more cutting edge. Like I said, the sharpness trial is great. We've got a flipper for deployment. That flipper has got no jimping on it anywhere. It's just the uh, plain flipper. And you can do the light switch method just fine. And if you push down on just a bit of an angle, that is also good for deploying the knife. Let's take a close look at the lockup right now. Lockup is very good. It's got loads of room to wear over during the years. Blade alignment, pretty close to perfect. 
the lock release. It's got some jimping on it and the cutaway on the G10 liner here, there's enough to get your thumb in there each and every time. No problem to disengage the lock. It just works very well. It's not that hard to do left-handed either. For those of us who are left-handed, we're used to that. The shape of the handle, it's a little thick, but we've got a big swedge across the sides here, all the way along the top, and then all the way along the belly, there's another big swedge that helps give it less of a blocky feel in the hand. And then it just sort of slopes down at the back. No lanyard hole? Well, no, no lanyard hole. But what we have is a pin right there for the lanyard. So you can tie off a lanyard right there. And then we've got the hourglass shaped uh, body pins. Uh, there's a screw to take off the handle scale on this side. And on this side, uh, we've got two screws for the pocket clip and then one at the pivot to adjust the pivot. Most rake knives have got a D-shaped pivot pin, and since this is just a flat pin on this end, I suspect this is the same, but we'll find out for sure when we take it apart. Pocket clip. It's one of the standard rake pocket clips. I like that it comes flat on the top, and there's enough depth in there that with these button screws, it's not in the way. I don't prefer button screws, but at least these are fairly high-quality screws. Uh, rake does not use cheap, soft screws, so I like that a lot. Let's demonstrate the pocket clip now. As I showed before, it likes to climb over right away and it just goes full depth every single time, no problem. So you don't have an awful lot sticking out of your pocket. It doesn't look like you've got a full size folder in your pocket and this is definitely a full size folder. You know, you got the holes in the pocket clip and stuff. It's not bad. I did notice there's a little bit of a hole there, and it's over a sixteenth of an inch. It's about a millimeter and a half wide, which is just, you know, they just made the wrong size hole in the G10. It's just another spot where I guess lint or something can, can collect. Not a big error at all. How well does this blade perform in terms of cutting and piercing and things? It's not designed as a piercing knife, but it does fairly well since uh, you've got the swedge here and uh, yeah, it does. It's just that little bit thick. I'll, I should give you the thickness right here now since it's not a standard thickness. How thick is it just behind the sharpening there, just behind the sharpening bevel? It's on the screen how thick that is. Nice belly. So that's good for doing, you know, work where you want to get underneath something and cut a little thing away or something similar to skinning I guess maybe you could use it for something like that then you got that long straight section and since it's the standard thickness behind the grind that I really like it cuts fairly well I quite like it grips I like how the back of the handle comes up like that so the reverse grip very solid even though there's no jimping anywhere for it the reverse pull grip, you gotta pull your thumb either way for that to be comfortable. It's not the most comfortable that way, but that's not used very much. Uh, you know, a saber grip, or hammer grip, you know, it feels quite well in hand. The one con that I have as far as gripping it is on the belly here, you know, you've got this big swedge. I would like the edge broken here even more. So if I don't sell this knife after I'm done with the review, I will be sanding that down right there on that edge, just taking it off at about a 45 degree angle because it did get a little hot in hand in that area. Other than that, very, very nice. Now let's take the thing apart and show you the insides. Okay, here I've taken the pivot screw and the pocket clip off and lifted this off. And there you go. Those are the two screws right there. Those are T6 again, most definitely. Very little blade, uh, blade play, very little screwdriver play in there, which is quite nice. Uh, just like these screws are very well done. I'm very impressed by them. D-shaped pivot pin right there. All right, so here it's taken apart. We've got large steel ball bearings. There are, what, two, four, six, eight, ten ball bearings in each 
that's quite nice. There's the ceramic detent. A little bit of weight loss with this large cutout here for the lock arm. And then we've got the skeletonizing here. I think a little more skeletonizing would have been good. Like that hole there, maybe if there would have been a row of them on here. It would help the balance point get a little closer to directly over where your index finger sits. But it's not bad. While I was cleaning everything up to re-lubricate it, I noticed there's a tiny little silicone washer right behind the pivot pin. So as it sits in here, and yeah, there's the D shape, that helps it uh, sit just right and uh, seals it off. And it helps when you put the uh, pivot screw in the other side here. It doesn't need Loctite because that silicon washer is constantly absorbing the shock and stopping the pin from coming loose. And um, I did have to snug up the pin once during my testing, but it's not like it was coming loose all the time, not like a lot of my Tucson knives. I just noticed two screw holes here, like there's two screw holes here, that is for the pocket clip. That means at least at one point they were thinking about making it right and left friendly for uh, the pocket clip. And now let's go over all the sizes and dimensions. I will remove the measuring tape when we're done with all the specs. Just a visual cue for those of you who uh, want to skip this section. The weight of the knife, 127 grams, 4.5 ounces. Not bad at all for such a big knife. Sharpness from the factory, 120 bests. Slightly better than average. The cutting edge length, 95 millimeters, 3.74 inches. The blade length, it's actually a little bit less because the handle comes out this way. 91.7 millimeters, 3.61 inches. The thickness of the blade is 3.43 millimeters, which is 0.135, so a bit over an eighth of an inch. The blade depth, the widest point anywhere along the knife is here by the heel, 23.6 millimeters, 0.93 inches. The thickness behind the grind, 0.51 millimeters, 20 thousandths of an inch. So that's exactly what I like on an EDC knife. Sometimes a tiny bit thinner, but I certainly don't like it thicker. The grind angles. Well, I'll give you the averages first. Let's say 23.4 degrees, 26.6 degrees. That's why it didn't cut very well. It cut okay, but it didn't excel like I expected it to. Uh, the sizes. 26.8 degrees, 23.6 degrees, and then about 26.6 along here. This side, it's about 23.4 degrees along the straight section. They did the straights fairly well, but then 22.9 and 23.4. So it's not sharpened terribly inconsistently, but I would have liked, especially with 14C28N, this could easily handle 18 degrees per side, and it would cut quite a bit better. And that's what I'm going to do as soon as I'm finished recording this video. I sharpened it and tested it. Wow, this is awesome. I haven't even strapped it yet. And I forgot to mention before that the detent is quite good. It holds it in when it's supposed to be in and you saw the action. So very nice. Oh, the handle. We're talking about the handle length now. The handle is 121.1 millimeters, which is 4.78 inches. The grip area, it's just a bit over 10 centimeters, a bit over 4 inches. That's quite big. The thickness of the handle, 15.5 millimeters, which is 0.61 of an inch. That's why these big swedges help to uh, make it feel okay in the hand. And it does feel pretty good. Now, even my wife said, you know, it feels pretty good in hand. She's got much smaller hands than I have. The handle depth. So within the grip area, where is it widest? Right back here. I don't measure here because then I've got to come down. So right there, 24.2 millimeters, 0.95 of an inch. And when the knife is closed, the widest point is up here at the flipper. 32.2 millimeters, 1.27 inches. And the total length of the knife, when open, 212.8 millimeters, 8.38 inches. So just a little bit shy of eight and a half inches, 
not bad at all. Three and three quarters in the blade. It's proportional. Uh, the balance point is right there. You know, I would prefer the balance point to be right about here. So a little more skeletonizing would have been okay. But uh, not bad. That would make the overall weight a tiny bit lighter too. Not that it's overweight. What are my closing thoughts? What do I think of this knife? I think it's well built. We've got good action from those ball bearings. It's a decent slicer. It's got a strong tip. So if that's what you're looking for, if you do a little bit of prying every once in a while with your knives, even though we all say it's not recommended, and for piercing, it's it's powerful. And it's sharp enough to do a decent job piercing into uh, you know other kind of tissue, but certainly hard things like uh, leather or other materials, not 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 a big problem at all. I really like the sharpness choil. So many knives are done very poorly at this point of the knife, so these guys did very well. Uh, the lock release is really good, as I mentioned. Lock up is good. Uh, I already talked about how smooth the action was. They've got quality screws on here. Um, I like that the lanyard pin is right back there, so it's out of the way of the cutting edge, but it leaves the knife looking very nice. I don't use lanyards that often, so I really like that solution. But even if you have a lanyard on there, and you know, when you're gripping the knife, the lanyard can come out the back, and so it doesn't, you know, bunch up right there. So that's a good thing. And the grip is reasonable. I'm sure, whoa, I'm sure the grip will be better once I've sanded those edges down. That is, if I keep this. I do sell 95% of my knives in order to raise enough money to buy some more knives to review. I won't be doing another knife sale until August, certainly till August, maybe September, because I'll be gone almost all of July visiting my parents in Ontario. I will try to post some things to YouTube, uh, probably to the YouTube community page, maybe a video or two. If you don't know what the community page is, it's youtube.com slash Canadian Cutting Edge slash community. And my Instagram, it's also Canadian Cutting Edge. You can search for me there. The cons. It's a little bit thicker at the tip than I prefer and this edge. Other than that, I very much like this knife. It's a good full-size folder. Solid lock up, you know, it's a good knife. And the price, 45 Canadian dollars. That's not bad at all. I have not seen uh, this knife. I haven't looked very much if this knife is available in Europe or not. But uh, I'm sure some rake knives are because rake is in the uh, real steel San Ren Mew family. Um, so there you go. Officially, they are owned by Phoenix uh, Light, so Phoenix Flashlights, uh, but they are in the Real Steel San Remu family. Thanks for watching my video. Thanks for checking out the Hussar, the budget version, the P21. I appreciate all my supporters. You guys are awesome. Every little bit helps. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, cut towards your chum, not your thumb. And bye for now.